This is a quick movie just to show you the basic operation of Autocorn software once you've downloaded it. Um, okay, the first thing to do is to go and open up our file. I'm going to go and open up a just a, a, a sequence file. We support a number of different formats. Um, at the moment, this is one simple Z stack that was actually acquired. I think this was through Metamorph. So we're just going to open up this stack here. I can quickly see uh, that it is 1392 by 1040. So that's probably a uh, course HQ2. 27 images, three channels, and one time point. Um, and if we had a number of files, uh, like we had Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, I could just use sequence detection and it'll actually work out what I'm working with. In fact, we'll do another one on file opening later on. Okay, so I'm just going to open up this image. Okay, and it's opening up the image actually and generating some views. It wants to open it up in a nice big format. Um, so I've just got it here. Now, every time an image is opened inside um, AudioQuant, it's going to open it up as a maximum intensity projection. So, let's have a look here at the data browser. Okay, This should automatically open, uh, but it's just here, this icon here, and this actually holds open the images that we have. And I can see here, I've actually got another image here, so let me just get rid of that. So, this is the, the, the file I'm working with currently. As I say, it's a three channel image. It is a maximum intensity projection. I can look at the sides of the image just like that, if required. I can also, if I want to, I can look by changing it from max to slice view. I can play through the slices. Now, depending on how the file format was saved and depending on how good this is, it's going to put some of the information into Autocorn already. In this case, I've left this setup deliberately empty. So I have to actually put in the Z spacing. Now I actually know that this was 0 0.165 and 0.165 by 2. So now if I go back to my maximum intensity projection, you can see, okay, now I'm actually at the right values. Now I have to go and enter in what my, my channels, because for deconvolution I need to know my red, green and blue channel information. So I'm just going to come through here. I could actually say actually I was using for red, I was using Texas red. Or alternatively, I can just put in brackets the emission wavelengths and then NM and then that's me done. So I could do the same here. So let's just go, let's go GFP. Well instead of GFP, let's make it 510. So let's just go. 510 space nm and that's good enough for it and uh, I'm going to pick the last one I'm going to pick as Daffy okay the last things I need to know is I, I need to know what modality I'm using so this means am I using a wide field stack am I using a transmission stack am I using uh, laser scanning multi photon spinning disk and focal now when you download the trial version you're going to have all of these options However, they are different products, and you need to consult your salespeople as to which product you need. Um, particularly if you get the confocal, you get laser scanning, spinning disk, and multi photon. But if you just get the wide field package, you get wide field and transmitted light. So this is wide field, so let's just do that. Other things objective lens. Okay, well, I've got a list of them here. I could say this was done on a, a 60 times 1.4 and A. Or I can just put in, or I could actually just say, actually, no, it's not. It's actually 100x. Okay. The immersion media, maybe I want to be dead accurate and say, actually, it was 5.25, not that I ever would be. And I just press apply. Okay, so I've got my image up here now and everything's good. Now I want to do some blind deconvolution. So I'm just going to come in and say deconvolution, 3D deconvolution. And on the right-hand side, I get my stack. So... I can see exactly what I need to do. I need to follow down one through four. So first of all, am I doing a blind deconvolution? So am I modifying the point spread function as I do my deconvolution? Or am I doing a fixed, a non-blind? Okay. So non-blind is your classical measurement of a point spread function, or you can do a, a measured and an assumed point spread function throughout a non-blind. So you can actually say, okay, we'll just keep iterating with the same presumed point spread function. But I prefer blind, and I'm going to use a theoretical point spread function for my blind. So it's going to go and calculate, 
uh, a rough point spread function and from that iteration on it's going to make a better and better point spread function. If I did take a stack of beads I could simply go to that stack of beads now and select it. That would just be a standard file. I would just put it in. That would be my point spread function. I'd load my point spread function as a movie file of images effectively. So deconvolution. Use default. Use default is pretty straightforward. It's set up to be right for the majority of images. So you can come in here and you can say I want to do more iterations or I think it's noisier than normal. And you could even go to super expert settings down here. But we're just going to use default. And then we can say underneath this, show us the progress window. That's quite nice. That tells us how long we have to go. Um, it says the base name. It wants to give you a name for the output file. So it wants to say, I want you to be called um, deconvolution raw multichannel.seq, for example. Finally, save the point spread function. Some people want to have a look at the point spread function um, so they can actually see what was going on within the stack, have a look at their, um, their spherical collaborations and so on. The final section here is simply, does everything make sense? I'm using wide field. My spacing seems good. My objective seems good. My emission wavelengths seem good. Um, settings are okay, so I get a green button. What if settings weren't okay? So let's come in here and say, actually, you're going to be a 200 micron per Z stack. Okay, it still thinks that is okay. So let me just try and dummy it the other way around. Let's just make it 200 in one of these axes. Okay, now it's saying you can't be 0.16 by 200. That makes no sense. That's crazy. Theoretically, you could have 200 microns in Z. So, but you can't have 200 microns in X and Y. That just is a bit bizarre. So it says you can't do your deconvolution now. You're absolutely stuck. So let's put that back to 0 0.165 and apply and I'm back ready to go so let's just zoom it back to 100% of size okay well actually what I'm going to do here because this might take a lot of time to do this deconvolution it's quite a big stack I'm actually going to just use a region of interest a square and I'm just going to grab a little area like this Ooh. left click to set and then I'm going to crop that area And this is just going to take a little cutout area, and I'm actually going to do the deconvolution on this area. Okay, so I'm now ready to go. I can just press tick, and we'll start deconvolving. Now, while I'm deconvolving, we actually get this little um, effectively binned area update to show us what's going on. So you can see it starts to process a particular channel, so it's looking at the red channel. In fact, if I come and press here, I get the display status at the bottom. I can see that I've started doing raw, multicolor cropped, and it's running, and it's at 10%. In fact, I can even come underneath this and actually have a look at the jobs that are going. It's just doing one particular channel, and then it's going to do another channel, and it's pending doing other jobs. So it's pretty straightforward. It's just going to do that deconvolution a little bit at a time. Again, this window is a preview window, so this isn't the result, but we'll just get close and we'll just have a look. Also, while we're waiting, one thing we can have a look at is just very quickly is the image enhancement. Image enhancement is just in this little drop down here, and this allows you to, to set up whether you um, do any form of auto scaling on your image. Your image is always quite nice in AutoQuant because it auto scales. Uh, but it'll auto scale on an average. So if you had a particularly weak, say, blue channel, it would try and boost the blue channel above the red and the green. So be careful and, and have a look at what's going on here and make sure you're happy with how things are displayed here. Okay, well, we're getting to 82% complete of doing this deconvolution task. I think we're just starting to add back in the blue. So actually, I'm looking at the task of the channel. So yep, we're starting to add back in the blue. And even though this is a preview, I can now see it's significantly better than the original image. So our total time run is 51 seconds. Now, 
Autoquan and all the deconvolution uh, information is on the website. There are also seminars on the or webinars on our website that explain how you can do deconvolution, where it comes from. Um, that's all pretty theoretical. This is mainly about just how to use the software. Um, which is good, apart from it takes a couple of seconds to run. Okie dokie, now we're done. Okay, so let's close our original image. And let's just close down the viewer here and let's just have a look at what we actually had before and after. So I think we can all see that, you know, structurally we're getting a lot more information in here. So I can do a couple of things now. I can synchronize them just by clicking on those two little bits. And if we just zoom in, and I want to kind of zoom in and drag them down. Now that's looking pretty nice, so we probably want to maintain aspect ratio and zoom in. So you can see that's pretty nice, pretty even, a lot clearer. And if we actually play through the stacks, maybe I'll just get them both to a 100%, uh, but they are at the same. If we just play through the stacks, you can see that we can now go through and look at the whole stack, synchronize through and play. We see that the deconvolved data is an awful lot nicer, an awful lot clearer and with a bunch more information. Okay, well I hope that helps as a bit of a start. Um, obviously there's a lot more to the package than that, but if you have any more questions, uh, please feel free to contact us. There's a lot of help guys inside as well, but um, your best bet is contacting tech support or your, later, uh, your local dealer or sales office. Okay, thanks very much.